Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's a girl from Elungu back with another reaction video. If you are new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. Today, I'm going to be reacting to the hidden history of Christmas. So, without wasting time, let's get into the video. In the winter season, around December 25th, the people celebrated the winter solstice. And so the winter solstice would come about somewhere from December 21st all the way to around January 6th or so. And so the people of the north would celebrate different holidays, have different occasions based upon the winter solstice. In the winter time, there is a period where there is no light. You are literally in darkness 24 hours of the day. And this stretches for a period of time. Now could you imagine if you're living in Alaska, or living in Canada, or living in Norway, and you don't have central heating, and the cold is outside, it's darkness around you, people are dying from disease, it's a terrible time and, and every family would probably lose somebody or they would know of somebody dying from the cold and disease during that season. This is the winter solstice. And so when the sun starts to come out, the people now are looking at the sun as a life-giving force. And so during that time, a number of ceremonies were held in northern countries. In um, the far north was the Feast of the Twelve Nights which stretched from December 25th to January 6th. Also in ancient Greece, there was the Bacchanalia, which was held for their god Bacchus, the god of wine and sport and play. The Romans had the Saturnalia for their god Saturn, their main sun god Saturn. And so you find during these times that the people held ceremonies in the north, they would burn our bonfires. The light was important, the fire, because the fire represents the light, the life-giving force for those who worship nature. Also in the north, they recognized that there was one tree that even that despite the cold would still remain alive, the evergreen tree, the fir tree. And so in some cases they would take this fir tree believing that there was powers of life within the tree and they would put it in their homes, set it there and put a light on the top of it or burn them in the front or they would make mistletoes and put them over their doorways, a type of what we would call ta'wiz or tamima. It is an amulet and they would hang the amulet over their doors, hang the amulets in their home, hoping that this fir tree, that this so-called life-giving force would protect them from the danger of the winter. And so their ceremonies developed around this. And this went on for hundreds of years. We also find in the ancient uh, northern countries and the Druids of the north, they carried out special ceremonies surrounding the mistletoe and surrounding the fir tree and the beliefs and, and they would meet within circular areas. And they had a secretive cult that spread throughout the far northern countries. One of the interesting individuals, and you can look this up if you can find it in the dictionaries or encyclopedias, is a man called Mithra or Mithras. This is a very mysterious character. And when you look at history, you find that this uh, individual called Mithra was born on December 25th. His day of the week was the seventh day of the week that we still call Sunday. He was supposed to be the son of the, of the sun god himself and they had a special sacrament made up of bread and wine and they would make this drink during this time and supposedly he died for the sins of the people. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? But when you try to find Mitra or Mithras in the encyclopedias, they, through, through state intervention, erased the name. Why is this? That is because after the time of Jesus, Isa alayhi salam, when the message began to spread and they went north, and you'll see within historical writings 
that Barnabas, one of his disciples, met a man named Saul or Paul, who later called himself Paul. Paul said he saw Jesus on the Damascus road. And he went to the disciples, but the disciples turned against Paul. Only Barnabas stayed with him. But when Paul and Barnabas went into Greece, Barnabas left him. Now what is the reason why they all left him? What are the concepts coming through Paul? Many people say, well, they left him because he was Saul before and he used to torture the, the early followers of, of Isa alayhi salam. But also you can see, and if you look at present day Christianity, that most of the concepts of the Trinity, of the blood sacrifice, the original sin, and most of the concepts which relate to more than one God are coming through Paul. The preachers are, are, are quoting Paul sometimes more than Jesus during their sermons. And so Barnabas left Paul. And somewhere in the early days, in Rome or Greece, somewhere in that area, those missionaries who were teaching the, te the teachings of Jesus, Isa alayhi salam, met with this force coming from the north. And so you will see in ancient Roman history that in, in some cases the Roman emperor would go out to the Colosseum and the gladiators would be fighting each other and everybody's cheering for the gladiators. Sounds like one of our football games. They would go to the Colosseum, right? And the gladiators would fight. And then if one of the gladiators was down and they would look at the, at the emperor, should I kill him or not? And if he wanted to kill him, he would say, he would go like that, right? You know, that sign down. If he said, keep him alive, he goes like this. You know how we use it today? Yes. Okay? He gives that sign. Okay? One of the terrible things happening during these uh, rituals at the Colosseum is that they would bring the Christians out, literally men, women, and children, and feed them to hungry animals. They would take a hyena, or a wolf, or a lion, and get it hungry and crazy and beat it and throw raw meat at it and then send it out on the people and they would literally cheer and watch as the animal ripped the bodies apart. This is a terrible culture. Tear the bodies apart. And so somewhere along the line, somebody who couldn't take the torture, who felt that maybe we can win these people over, made a compromise. And you start to see changes going on from the early part of the Christian era in southern Europe where the, the major ceremonies held by the nature worshipping people are combined with Christian names and Christian ceremonies and therefore what comes forth to us is a mixture with the two streams coming together where you get a monotheistic name or a monotheistic character with a pagan ceremony. And so the mixture of this together is what is giving us the present day hol holidays um, that we see. Number one, we understand that Isa alayhi salam, according to um, the different reports uh, of the different scholars in, in many religions, he was not born in the cold weather. History shows us that he was born during the warm weather. Even in the Christian traditions, they have the belief that the shepherds were tending their flocks outside. And in Palestine, you cannot keep your flocks outside in the wintertime in the evening. You bring them in because it's cool at night. And so it was the warm weather. It was also the time of the taxes in the north. In the story coming in the Quran, when we see the mention uh, in chapter 19 in verses 24 to 25, and we see the mention of the story of Mary, because it is the belief of the Muslims that Maryam, may Allah be pleased with her, was a virgin and she had dedicated her life to the worship of one God, prayer and fasting and by the power of Allah that the Creator breathed His Spirit into her and she, she conceived Jesus, He said, be and it is, she conceived Jesus, Isa alayhi salam, without a father, without a man. That is a belief of Islam. It is also a, a belief that when she felt the pain of the pregnancy, 
that, that, that the angel came to her and told her to go outside of the city. She went outside of the city to a remote area and there she found a, a palm tree and she found water. And it was speaking about rutub, jannia. It was speaking about a type of rutub or a type of dates. And those who know, who have lived in the desert area know that when the dates um, become ripe, when you start to see the color of the dates change, because dates are not brown, you know. Dates are originally red and they're yellow, they're other colors, but they turn the brown. It's, it's at the height of the heat that the dates become ripe. And so it's at that time that she gave birth to Isa alayhi salam. So from different points of view, different historical points of view and different religions, we understand that Isa alayhi salam was not born during the winter season. He was born in the warm weather. So who was it that was born in the winter season? What is that? Who is that character now? Let us become detectives and try to find out the answer to this problem. Number one, you have to understand this concept of Saturn, the concept of Bacchus. When they are portrayed by the different artists who drew pictures of them or the sculptures, they're usually portrayed as a heavy set man with a white beard. And when in the Sistine Chap Chapel, uh, Michelangelo, drew his picture, you could see the long flowing beard and there are actually pictures of this man on a sled being drawn by snakes with wings. Snakes with wings. Snakes do not normally fly. But in this case, the snakes have wings and the heavy set man is on his sled being drawn by these flying animals. Sound familiar to you now, doesn't it? He's being drawn by the flying animals. He's performing miracles. He's, he's coming out on December 25th, which is not the birthday of Isa alayhi salam, has nothing to do with Christianity. It is the time of the, of the Bacchanalia and, and, and the Saturnalia. And he is representing riotous fun, drunken reverie. And so what happens on Christmas, the Christmas season, especially in America, People today are not even thinking about Isa alayhi salam. They're not even thinking about Jesus. They're looking how they can get drunk. On Christmas, what is going on? In the Caribbean and many parts, if they offer you a Christmas pudding, or Christmas pie, or Christmas drink, watch out. Because it's probably laced with rum or wine. That's the spirit of the season. Now this riotous occasion that was going on went so far that the Christian church banned it. And the Church of England, according to historical sources, actually banned it all the way to 1647. It was prohibited in England to celebrate Christmas because they saw Christmas as being a pagan holiday. This is an official position taken by the Christian church, the Church of England who were known at that time as Puritans. What happened was an individual was superimposed. A name was superimposed. We hear about the name of uh, Saint Nicholas. Saint Nicholas. Now, Saint Nicholas himself is actually coming from the ancient writings of Beowulf. And in these writings, which are done in the Scandinavian region, we find the name Nick or Nickel or Nicker. He was known as a demon, the demon of the north. He was known as the evil spirit of the north, the name of Odin, the evil principle. And so in Germany and in many of the northern countries, the people actually looked upon this so-called Saint Nick as being an evil force and they would tell their children in the winter time, don't go outside because if you do, Nicholas will come along, Nickel will come along, he'll capture you, put you in his bag and take you away. And so they used it as a negative concept. In Isaiah, in what is left of the Bible, in chapter four, in, in 14, 13, the devil is, is known as the prince of darkness. And it is an understanding that his throne the seat of his power is in the north. Somewhere in the north is the seat of power of this evil. 
And so the Germans also, when they depicted this Nicholas or this uh, Pelsnickel, as they would say, Pelsnickel in German, it means a furry devil. When they, when they depicted him, they depicted him as a man with red fur. He had red fur coat. And he was, his base was in the north, and he was the essence of evil. And the, the Church of England, till 1647, took the position that this celebration could not go on. So what we are actually seeing is that the, the, the Christmas occasion was actually the time of evil. It was the time of the belief in the Saturnalia and the Bacchanalia. And because of this, they shifted the occasion to New Year's Eve. They shifted all of their feelings and their merriment and their evil to New Year's Eve. Now before we go to that, looking back at, back at Christmas, what is happening now in Christmas season? I don't know what goes on in Miami, but in the northern cities, on Christmas occasion, they, they put lights around and Santa Claus parades. Do you have a Santa Claus parade here? They have Santa Claus parades and St. Nicholas is outside and he's in the streets and everybody's talking about St. Nicholas and the poor children are taught that St. Nicholas is gonna come down your chimney. Most people don't have chimneys in Miami anyway, but a 350 pound man is gonna come down your chimney and bring you presents and keep his clothes white and red and go to all of the homes in the area and, and put uh, um, uh, presents in your stockings and, and, and put uh, uh, presents under your tree and then fly back out into space. And, and the father, the poor father, who sweat and toiled all year to get you the presents, gets no credit for the present given to the child. Saint Nicholas comes down the chimney, gives you this present, flies off into the night. And many of us were raised thinking, believing in this. Some of us would sneak into the night and look and see our father putting the present under the tree. We knew what he was doing anyway. But you went along with it and the people say, well, you know, it, it's Christmas. Don't you like to have fun? You want to stop the children from having fun? What kind of people are you? But what, is the, what are you teaching the children? You are using the name of Jesus, using the name of Isa alayhi salam, and you are using a figure who historically is the devil. The devil himself, well, Iyadu Billah. They are using his figure, and he has now taken over the Christmas season. Christmas now to most people means materialism. You have to buy presents for your cousins and your friends, and you gotta buy about 34 uh, presents. And you find that most American people are in debt for six months after Christmas. Now, where is Jesus? You get drunk, you fight, you lose all your money, the stores raise their prices. Isa alayhi salam is described as a very humble person. Most of the time he didn't wear shoes. Only one or two ch changes of clothing. A very simple person eating very simple food. Fasting most of the time. You see what is going on? There are two streams now. A stream of polytheism. A stream of monotheism. And now the polytheism, the materialism, is overtaking the monotheism and standing in the way and taking over our society. And some foolish Muslims coming along from outside of in their country say, well, I just want to be an American. Um, I want a tree too. So I said, one of the brothers said he had a Christmas tree in his house. He came for, I said, brother, do you know what the tree stands for? He said, no, uh, okay, I'll get a palm tree with dates. I'll, I'll make it halal, a halal Christmas tree. But brother, you have to understand what it means. You have to understand what it means. Number one, the Prophet ﷺ, when he spoke about, he talked about a ruqya, wa tama'im, wa tiwala. He said all of these things are shirk. That if you hang amulets, thinking that this ta'weez, or this amulet is going to protect you from something, then you are actually giving power to, to, to the creation of Allah and taking it away from the Creator. If you think that by making some spells, going to a magician and asking them to put a spell on someone, you want to get married. So you go to the Sahir and say, put a spell on Ali, I want to marry him. Put a spell on Zainab. What kind of marriage are you going to have if you go to the magician? 
And so the Prophet, peace be upon him, named all of these things, the superstitions, the amulets, all of these type of things are the other stream which goes away from monotheism, from the belief in one God, and takes you into another religion. very interesting video i mean we should be aware what some of these events stand for just don't go there and celebrate like he said at the end of the day when you're hanging those trees when you're all sorts of ornaments it's like it's like more of building a shrine that you're um that you're taking um uh, how can i put it it's like you're just building something in honor of an event that you don't fully understand therefore giving your energy to that being that doesn't even exist called santa claus and i mean if you're going to buy presents let your children know that it's that you're the one who bought for them you worked hard and bought all those things other what other than stripping points of their part just hear the children say thank you and be proud of them not just children even adults some of these events really take your time to understand them if you're going to celebrate then i don't know i mean I remember a long time ago we actually used to get the um the actual tree someone would always deliver a fresh big tree and those trees were pretty pretty nice but now i mean we have a christmas tree but i don't even remember the last time we put it up otherwise let's be careful of what we're celebrating there we don't know what we're doing we may not know what we're saying and we may not know what we're putting our souls through Otherwise, this should be an eye opener and a big shout out to the person that suggested this. It's November, but they suggested I react to this. Uh, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. And I'll see you in my next reaction video.